All right. Now, for the next speaker, okay, our next speaker is Mr. John Lloyd Edios, also known as JLO. So JLO is a 22-year-old IT professional. He just recently graduated in Western Mindanao State University, where he was a Google Developer Student Club lead and an editor-in-chief editor of the Institute's publication. He is currently working at the comfort of his home as a full-time UI and graphic artist for a US-based marketing agency and doing freelance design projects on the side. JLo loves community work and has been part of GDG Zamboanga as the creative lead since 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome the ever gorgeous JLo Edios. Take it away, JLo. Good afternoon, everyone. I am JLo and I am the creative lead of GDG Zamboanga and I've been also Google Developer Student Club's lead for Southeast Asia representing my university, Western Mindanao State University, and I am working as a full-time UI designer for a US-based internet marketing agency. And today we're talking about, well, hey, welcome to Google I.O. Extended Zamboanga Peninsula. Sorry about that. And today we're talking about something very very personal for me and something that everyone loves and something that every designer knows about and this is material design and let's talk about material design in 2021 what's new and what's popping and today i'm excited to offer you an in-depth preview of google and how are they going with material design and i'm gonna share google's thinking on how design systems can evolve and what that means for designers and developers First, let's take a look at foundational thinking. We introduced material design in 2014 as a system for building bold and beautiful consistent digital experience. It became the design foundation for Google's products, engineers and designers and developers all around the world. Like you have extended the system to work for you, brand and your work for your brand as well as launching in millions of apps. But design system can never ever stay static, nor should they. So Google continued to evolve the system, and in 2018, they launched theming, a major update to material. It delivered a more unified and adaptable design system theming and expanded the expressive range for brand's identity by supporting custom colors, types, and shapes. Google took the same components as they should, I mean, as they used to build their own apps and made them available as an open source libraries. And even though we missed Google with the I.O. last year, they kept busy, they kept working, and they've continued to update material design with dark theme motion systems, looks, and tools, and more. So this year, Google was excited, very, very excited to share some of the latest material updates with Android 12. As you saw in Google's keynote, Android's new UI looks strikingly different. People are craving more custom experiences, and we think when we think about user needs, from Mountain View to Mumbai to London to Lagos, it's clear that a strictly modernist approach to utility and design, or the idea that one size fits all need rethinking, or even revolutionizing. While smartphone features and functions continue to grow, and one size fits all approach feels impersonal, really think it's impersonal, it takes time, it really takes time to effort, to unbox your phone, and then make it yours. It's time to rework the settings to fit for you. So instead of personal devices should feel personal, with Android 12, Google is working to make these devices feel as individual as people who use them. Google set out to evolve material design to empower individual identities by enabling product expression. That areas richly varied as human behaviors, needs, and desires. Material is designing a future which devices support, not suppress. It doesn't suppress individuality. When we think about metaphors and paradigms that guided past design systems, they've built on ideas from science fiction, techno-futuristic utopia, blended with ideals of modernist designs. 
Grid's hierarchy and consistency are all hallmarks of materials in early years. So, as you can see, these symbols, what does these symbols mean to you? These symbols and metaphors central to material. It reflects work culture and commodities. They learned on schemorphism. If you're a designer, you know what schemorphism are. Schemorphism represents something in real life. As you can see, these are folders, trash cans, and yes, papers. It was effective and relatable. But as our relationship with devices and screens become more fluid and personal, Google saw a need for a more expensive design language, one that works across boundaries like work and leisure. They asked how can material design enable people to move through their lives in a way that honors both the personal, professional, the public, and private. We're, talking the Google, we're taking the Google scale ambition of building all users and making it work in an individual human scale too. Google's goal for universally beautiful and helpful design systems requires some confrontation with this knowledge that beauty and utility are personal. In essence, how do you evolve a standard language to work for a non-standard world? So that's the question. To get there, Google identified three. Three guiding principles, starting with the idea of number one, comfortable, comfortability. They ask how can a design system make a person feel at home with their device? And the past year challenged us, really challenged us. And until now, it challenged us in so many ways. Our need to stay connected and feel at ease with our technology is stronger than ever, stronger than ever. So we set out to create experiences that resonate with people and their individual definitions of comfort. Secondly, and in friend detention with comfortable, is iconoclastic. How can software exhibit the awareness to adapt and thrive through change? We saw a need to challenge familiar assumptions and conventions, and it is an opportunity to anticipate designs for emerging ecosystems, blurring the boundaries between hardware and operating systems and applications. Finally, they're spirited. Google wanted Google wanted to imbue digital development with the spirit of natural world. Organic forms that react to input are an example of how surfaces effects can enliven our everyday interactions, adding new energy and optimism. They, they're introducing the sense of aliveness, particularly through shape, space, light, and motion. That is the direction of Google is pursuing with material design. And that is beginning with, of course you know it, Android 12. Google wants, to, wants people to be able to co-create their visual experience and design, the world to find comfort and in that space dynamic. Color makes these possible, and it's a new feature that derives individualized color palettes from a person's wallpaper photo. You know what they say? You can judge a person by their wallpaper. So your photo is the starting point for more visual tuning as well. From high contrast to more neutral variations, variations of the color extraction pattern. So here's a closer look at how an image can set the mood for the system. The system picks a color from a person's wallpaper and translates a hue into tonal ranges. A range of light and dark tones is generated from all the extracted color. This allows the same palette to work across light and high contrast themes. And with the same color slots, you can see that it is a very comforting to see that these colors came from your wallpaper. And under the hood, there are features to the color system that support the need to all users to feel comfortable and reflected in their device. With the possibilities for color now vastly greater, Google had to find a way for any color combination to also have accessible contrast. They need to ensure that all potential color pairings work, even without testing each one. So, to manage for uncertainty, uncertainty and some unsure things of color dynamics, the dynamic color introduces Google, um, introduces Google coloring, and Google used established relationship between colors based on luminosity or light, um, light levels by calculating the luminance rather than hue. So if you're a designer, you would know what's the difference between luminance and hue. Hue is the variation of 
colors and luminance is how um, bright it is. And we can define which tones combine successfully. And I mean by successful is they eliminated the possibility of two low luminance colors being paired since that contrast would be insufficient and hurt will hurt your eyes and would not make it beautiful and pleasing. This way, inclusion and accessibility are the default standard for anyone using libraries. This is to make sure that people who have problems with their eyesight can still enjoy the beauty of material design. As a result, the color system is spread across the entire UI. Part of honoring the individual means making it possible for a person to change colors easily anytime in the course of the day. A person might jump from a bright visual experience with the dark theme later on. Personally, I like light theme, but sometimes when it's dark at night, I really need to use my dark theme, but still I want to have that experience of my own theme and just it being dark, so it's still, it's still there. And comfort is, as you can see here, these are text. Comfort is realized through more than just one color. Our Google apps are beginning to use Google Sans text. It's an addition to the Google Sans family. Familiar from Google's marketing materials, a new optical size is designed for smaller point sizes and perfectly suited for body text. And we're using variable font technology, making it possible for a range of adjustments or variations to be consolidated into single file. Variable font technology also demonstrates another guiding principles, iconoclastic, as I've said before. We're building a design system within the capability to break form and adapt to meet the needs of the moment. The flexible attitude can be felt whether adapting to a specific moment like an alarm clock ring or adapting to a different screen altogether. And speaking of change, instead of relying heavily on shadow, it's a new thing. Instead of, instead of shadows, Google is now using color and other methods to separate objects in the foreground and background. Also, shapes that allows us to look new ways and containment and containment state. We have to look into different ways on how can we see these things. And finally, Google is bringing the principle of spirit to the routine interactions. New surface effects like subtle animations, shimmering, can bring life to familiar feedback cues to interaction states. So for example, when a phone is connected to a charger, a shimmering leads to a confirmation that it is, it is charging. With the surface effects, we want to show you more than simple ways to make it more satisfying a sim rather than a simple fade. It is subtle for a palpable change, and flexible shapes are starting to point for smooth adaptation of layout and new ways to show surfaces. Interacting without stacking the shapes can stretch in region motion and is so much more than screen to screen transitions. By animating the details, screens come alive and with a spirit that mirrors and that doesn't copy organic movements. So as you've seen, there's a lot in store for material in Android 12, from dynamic color to adaptive components. Google is evolving the design language to create a more comforting, a more human comfortable spirited device, ecosystem for everyone. And as they introduce these changes, Google also know that these won't be the last. Since this, as I've said in the start of my talk, the design system is never finished. It continues to change and evolves. It involves continual creation and we're excited. I'm excited for future co-creating with you. So that's it for me, everyone. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for listening to my talk. And there's so much more coming from material design and there's so much more to explore. And if I were you, I'd be looking out for more features on Android 12. It's coming to more devices soon. And if you're only if you own an Android, please do update if you can. There's so much new things, visually pleasing things and effects animations on Android 12 that involves uh, behind the thinking of material design as what I've talked today. That's it for me. And again, thank you. I'm JLo, the creative lead of GDG Zamboanga. And I hope to share new things from you in the future. And that's it for me. Bye.